Hello and welcome to the historic Brawl Hub's uh, top 12 cards for uh, from Wilds of Aldrain. Uh, we, I'm uh, I'm one of the hosts, Grimstein. Uh, I was at the bottom of of all bottoms, and here's our season eight champion themselves, Hazor. Would all you like right. to say hi? Yep, I'm Hazor. Uh, thank you for the introduction, I guess. Uh, yeah, so as said, we're doing top 12 from the new upcoming set, Wilds of Eldraine, for historic brawl, for historic brawl purposes specifically. Uh, and then after our top 12, we're actually going to do a top 12 of also the new cards coming from the uh, Enchanting Tales, uh, basically the Mystical Archive bonus sheet of the set. Uh, honestly, honestly, I gotta say, the set's going to be fantastic. I can agree. There's a lot of good power level, but also healthy cards coming in this set. And yeah, it's generally powerful. Um, I think Grimstein, that's why we're doing top 12 instead of top 10. Uh, also, Grimstein mentioned it appeals to the kind of midnight clock style of Eldrain. It was very, very creative. <laughs> you gotta have a fairy tale, you gotta strike the midnight, and then when you strike the midnight, we'll go to the next night. Yep, exactly. All right, cool. So um, what we're starting with first is our honorable mention. Uh, well, so yes, we're more. breaking the clock right away, unfortunately, yeah. with this one. But <laughs> so before but we the have beginning to mention, <laughs> so but we have to mention it. Uh, while we don't, while we think these cards are going to see play, they're only we're honestly saying they're only probably going to see play because they're lands. That's right, it's the rare cycle lands. Yep, they all have the same type of abilities. They enter the battlefield tap. They can reanimate. I mean, they can animate themselves. And uh, when they declare an attack, something happens. The blue-red one basically uh, scries. The black-white one uh, drains for two life. Uh, the green-white, I mean, the green-black one gives you a food and exiles a card from your graveyard, and it's a four-four. Fantastic card. But they enter tapped. That's the that's the uh, elephant in the room, as they say. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not reading. Normally, in the rest of this video, we will be reading the full card. For these, we aren't, because it's an honorable mention, and there's five of them. It's all enemy colors. It's worth noting that this set is high enough power where the rare end cycle does not make it into the top 12 cards. So, uh, yeah. Uh, in the cycle, the lands that contain white or black are the three best ones. Uh, there's the white-red one, which is three mana to animate, and is a 2-2 that whenever it attacks puts a 1-1 counter oh, on target creature. That's like a that's the third best. The black green one is the best. It's four mana for a four four. That one attacks, as Grimstein said, exile and make a food. And then the white black one that drains for two also. And yep. the other two are not particularly not particularly great. Uh, in my the beanstalk opinion. basically uh, what that just makes another creature a three three when it attacks. Yeah, it's a five five. It makes another creature a three three, and it animates for five mana. So that's just super expensive. And in my opinion, the is it one is the worst because it's uh it's two mana to become a two one with first strike that when it attacks scry one and like well that's not a bad rate but the thing is that at that rate you want to be pushing an aggressive plan and you don't want to be running tap lands in an aggressive plan. I feel like it was kind of power nerfed as well due to the fact that it only gets first strike if it's your turn, type which as a whole I feel kind of uh, undermines you having it with the first strike. Yeah, Wizards has been mentioning they wanted to make it uh, as a balancing so that they uh, want to encourage you to attack with it, but I still feel like that's a bit bad for a rare land. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but, so... but now we're going to be starting off our countdown for the top 12. And starting us off is the, is the one and famous, one and the main character in the story, Kellen the Fey-Blooded. He's a two and a red, two two with double strike that gives a uh, legendary creature human fairy. His ability is, is double strike, as I mentioned, and other creatures you control get plus one plus zero for each aura and equipment attached to Kellen the Fey Blooded. He also has an adventure, Birthright Boom, a sorcery adventure that allows you to search your library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Now, to me, I feel like this card is such a sleeper for the format in general. Right now, in Boros, it, everyone knows Boros is the equipment field deck thing. You're going to be aggressive for equipment, all that. and that. But the thing is, everyone always argues about who's the top commander for those colors. You've got uh, 
I'm not. I'm not exactly a Boros player, so now I'm actually going on a blank with these cards. Uh, but essentially, you have the one from Zendikar Rising, which yeah, are basically it's, it's, uh, Akiri, Akiri, and Brainer are like the three equipment commanders, basically. And there's also like Jor Kadim, who that's true. well is Jor Kadim. Yeah. Um, but the thing about the Kellen that uh, makes them different is Kellen can grab you the equipment you need. If you need to, say, remove Indestructible, you can grab Shadow Spear. If you need uh, just to hit heavy and big, you can grab the good old Hammer. If you just need if you just need a creature to block, you can grab the reconfiguring creature equipment from Kamigawa. Yeah. So as a whole, it, it, it's a very versatile thing. It is worth noting that a lot of people think it's an equipment commander at the start, but it can also tutor up, tutor up auras. And in the format, we've got things like ossification, which are a great removal in general, and curse of silence, uh, increasing your opponent's commander by two. Uh, however, I actually think this commander, while it's probably the best incoming commander from the set, is definitely being overrated by a lot of people in the community. Uh, I personally think that increasing the cost of a lot of things you're going to tutor by two mana makes them just nowhere near as good as they would be. And in like in a competitive brawl game in particular, there is just no way you're casting this tutor more than twice in one game at most, in my opinion. That, but that's very reasonable. I <laughs> see it as that you could then later cast the adventure. So it's turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four. It's a payoff, but I can see what you mean. You don't want exactly want to over... Uh, pay for one uh, one equipment that could easily just be countered. Yeah. Since you're or hand hated even. Yeah. Which is why yeah, I, I agree. So it'll probably be best in an aggressive shell, but especially like Curse of Silence. Curse of Silence is terrible on turn three usually. You you don't want to be playing Curse of Silence on turn three. Um so just things like that are worth considering is that if you're building your deck around the tutor side, you probably aren't getting it more than a couple times in one game. And if you are, it's like the second tutor is four mana. That, that's a lot for a tutor. That's below eight. <sighs> eh. Moving on, I feel like it's not time to talk about our number 11 on the list. Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Fun one. So it's a legendary artifact that costs two mana. And its abilities goes as so, follow. You may spend mana, a zone or mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. Creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them have all activated abilities of all creatures' cards exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. And you can tap it to exile a target card from a graveyard, and when it's a creature you exile this way, you can put a counter on target creature you control. Now, I know some people might be going, oh, this seems a little too uh, low on the list type situation, type all that. I mean, it's graveyard removal, it could it. It uh, is a battle manipulator. You can pop a creature of your own to it, and it can go with uh, some crazy infinite combos, including like Coming of the Wild Grows and uh, the Sleep Curse Fae, allowing you to make a creature that can untap for infinite amount of times. Uh, nah, but, and I honestly I think that it is a bit uh, too high on the list, but Hazor does have some arguments for it. I think I meant to say, but you I guess it. Too low. My bad. Yeah. Uh, I'm, my main argument for it. I mean, I think it's not a bad card, actually. I, I don't think it's bad. I think, like, in a from a competitive standpoint, which is where I'm mostly evaluating these cards. Uh, for example, uh, Crucius, uh, the Crucius Dollhouse combo, will probably want to use this as a second Dollhouse. Uh, I've seen people talk about putting this in Yogmoth or something. So if your Yogmoth dies, you can put a counter on a creature, and then have that creature be able to activate Yogmoth. The only issue I see with this card is that if you're trying to use commander abilities, uh, you have to perma XL your commander to use it, which in general is not a good idea. And then if like this is your only source of 1-1 counters, if that creature dies, then you just don't have your commander for the rest of the game. Uh, on the other hand, the argument for it, as Grimstein said, is that uh, you can exile other activated abilities that aren't your commander, and you can do some weird combos with it, which are pretty fun. Uh, I'm just not sure how viable that could be in an average deck. In in, in a 60 deck, it's probably going to be amazing. In the 99, you think it's just going to be a scavenge news. I can see that. It doesn't seem terrible, though. I, th I think that that's why it's 11 on this list. There's things better than it, but Alrighty. it's definitely a good card. Cool. All right, let's All right, move on. what we got next. Okay, cool. We got Regal Bunnicorn. This is a card I'm personally pretty excited about. 
It's one and a white for a star star creature rabbit unicorn. Uh, its power and toughness are each equal to the number of non-land permanents you control. Uh, yeah, basically, it's just a, well, for the most part, white aggro card. It gets big when you play a ton of stuff. Uh, there's nothing really to say about it. <laughs> Really, he's running. He's really trying to push it me and convince me that this is this totally dominates the culture in every time because it's yes, it's in the ninety nine. Yes, it's a creature that can easily be answered by everything, but it gets so big. On on the one hand, I do love the butt egg one. It's one of my favorite cards. I am definitely crafting it like crazy. I think it's gonna be absolutely playable in like the top some top decks like Adeline. And even some uh, could go in some token borrows strategies in general. But as a whole, I think that the fact it doesn't have any ev evasion or even any ways to get through with the damage makes it so easy to chump block with, which is why I'm a bit hesitant to put it so high. But I was willing to concede to Hazard. Yeah, uh, I yeah, it's definitely. I feel like it goes in Adeline just like off the purpose. I mean, it doesn't have any kind of indestructible or evasion, which is definitely the downside of it which i see uh but i think in the long run its stats will probably make up for it it's, it's something time will tell i think in casual queue it'll definitely be very good though because a lot of people are not packing removal for the random like 10 10 for two mana <laughs> that, that's very fair yeah <laughs> all right but it dies to doom blade <laughs> i right. had to yeah. anyway cool so you got the next card i do got the next card uh it's this card is Torch the Tower. It's one red mana for an instant with Bargain. Bargain is a new keyword that lets you sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast the spell. Uh, Torch the Tower deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. If it was bargained, instead it deals three damage to that permanent and you scry one. Also has the line, if a permanent dealt damage by Torch the Tower would die this turn, exile it instead. Uh, yeah, it's strictly better Flame Blessed Bolts, and also, like slightly worse voltage surge personally i think this is it's not like a mono red card because it doesn't go face which is the big downside to a lot of red spells but i think in is it control deck specifically my personal favorite all storm conduit but also the general is it control deck uh it definitely has its place i think as a whole uh while i was a bit hesitant with it the thinking of it as a the round number 10 I honest or ten to nine. I honestly think that as a, it's a lot better than he, uh, even Hazard's X play. He would say it's like a take or worse for take surge, but this allows you to use have different options of what you sacrifice. Sure, you can you can sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token, which is a lot more viable than just saying sacrifice an artifact. Uh, the fact that it exiles a card means you will remove death triggers so, oh, in a long run type situation. No matter what, and if you and you don't always have to use the bargain ability, you can. But if you use a bargain ability, you also get a scry, which allows you to manipulate the top card of your deck. Since the since it's an instant as a whole, it's gonna be overly played. I feel. Uh yeah, I'll play. I agree. I think it's a good card for all those reasons. Particular index mm -hmm. that will generate like specifically treasure tokens. You can sacrifice treasure yeah. tokens to this, and it becomes so good. Um, you could sacrifice a blood token. Yeah, that, that too, if you're running something with blood tokens. I don't know. Playing whatever, uh, Anya Maid of Dishonor, I believe is the name of the card. If you're Voldaren, playing that, you probably want to. Voldaren Epicure, you dealt yeah. the one damage of burn. You're already winning. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, things like that. <laughs> um, I was going to say something else, and now I'm forgetting for a brief second. Oh, yes. Uh, in my opinion, a lot of Is It Control decks probably wanted to run Flame Blast Bolt as like the seventh best one mana red burn spell, and this is better than that, so I think it just goes with those. <laughs> Alrighty. Moving on, we're going back to me with one of my favorite cards in the set. Godric Cloaked Reveler. For one, he's a legendary creature that's a human noble. For one, and a double red, he, you, what you get is a creature with haste. And the new ability, Celebration, which gives you an ability that's as long as two or more non-land permanents out of the battlefield, under your control this turn. And for Godric, he becomes a dragon. Base power toughness 4-4, four, four, flying, and red. Dragons you control get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. It loses all other creature types. So he be he loses human noble, gains dragon. Now, to me, Godric is probably going to be the best mono red commander 
if you ask me. I know, I know. Oh, yeah, Ragavan is a thing. <laughs> Ragavan is a thing. Yes, everyone knows about a goddamn Ragavan. Ooh, monkey, go smash your face in. But, let, but I feel like the downside of Ragavan is that you, your deck building with Ragavan is very linear and easily answerable. The fact that you can, that a person could play an enchantment that gives all creatures minus one, minus one, for example, and a uh, Ragavan dies is easy. The fact that you could just hold answers to Ragavan and it just gets more and more costly just to play. And effective removal. But with Godric, you could play things differently. You could build a tokens deck. You could build a, just permanent enter in general. And, as, and the fact is, you could even just build Dragon Tribal with him very easily. Yeah, Since of that Lord that abilities gives you so much for it. You were saying? Yeah. Uh... Was, what was I saying? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's it's, yeah. A, it's a, at the very base, even without a celebration, it's a three mana three three with haste, which is not terrible. And then if you have two permanents, it's a four four with flying, and so it will go in any mono red aggro deck you are playing, guaranteed. Uh, it can be used as a commander. I think it definitely goes in Ragavan if that's what you're playing. I think Ragavan is a overrated commander for all the reasons you said. I don't know if this one's better than it though. Uh, I don't think I can say that, I, personally. I, <laughs> and uh, I just think that Ragavan is a bit overhyped for the format. <laughs> oh, I agree. For sure. Uh, yeah, Alrighty. This is definitely a very strong card for Mono Red, and you will want to be playing it if you're playing any kind of Mono Red. Alright, now we're going to That's our right. next one, number yes. 7. Uh, up the Beanstalk, a 1 and a green for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, and when you cast a creature spell with mana value 5 or greater, draw a card. Uh, this card is great. It replaces itself when it enters the battlefield, uh, and then gives you extra cards in the future. Great for Imodi, great for Atali, any kind of big green stuff, I would slam this right in, no question. In my opinion, I think that it might be a slightly overhyped for you type situation, but at the same time, it, as you say, it pays for itself. It, at its worst, and it, uh, is it only with creature spells, if I recall? Uh, yes, I believe it is only creature spells. Yeah, uh, no, uh, creature spell. no, any spell. Wow, I misread that. Yeah, card. that's better than I thought. <laughs> so you can cast Anissa, draw a card. You can cast uh, Nyx Blue Mansion, draw a card. You could cast uh, the Finale of Devastation, X of Three, draw a card. That's really any. Jeez, that's any spell with. Okay, that goes in more decks than I you thought were, it did, actually. I, I'm going to put that higher you, on the list. You were, thinking it was, you were thinking it was uh, 7, just because it could do it with creatures. But the fact that it could do it with, like, say, you cast a fairy and just uh, draw a card, plus, untap two lands, all that. So you drew two cards from casting a fairy. Yeah, that that is that is nuts. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's a yeah. value engine card in the long run. And Certainly. it's definitely going to see play in Historic Brawl. Yeah, if you're playing any kind of, like, somewhat significant top end, I would run this card. If you can consistently get even one or two draw triggers, I'd probably run it. Uh, well, okay, probably two draw triggers. One one draw trigger is a little eh, but yeah. If you can consistently I mean, get two draw, draw triggers trigger. in a game, I would take it, for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right it's fast, next? simple, and understandable. Moving on to the next card. Royal Treatment, a one green instant. Target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. Create a royal roll token attached to that creature. So if you control another roll on it, put that card in your graveyard. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has ward one. Now, to me, this is like one of those blossoming defense, all that type of situation. But even better. The fact that it gives you the award one as the ability with the royal is insane. That's just math. That means that even after to you use as a protection spell it still gives you protection so it, so no matter what you do I mean, so no matter what that creature is gonna have, be able to make your opponent have to pay an extra one mana every other turn yeah uh, we're getting to the point where we both agree that cards are really strong uh, i agree that this card is probably the best version of the snakes couldn't veil that we've had to date uh sex and veil might still be better in like one one counters decks but if you're playing any kind of those one green protection spells, you will want to be playing this. It is just, it's crazy, because it still protects your creature, as you said. And w don't, don't sleep yeah. on Ward 1. One mana can be a lot. <laughs> I mean, I play rather Drabic, 
Four two is already enough. Could yeah, you imagine if Rada could get three? Yeah. So then you would have to pay three mana. Yeah. But sadly, you can't get more than multiple rolls on a card because it, could you imagine a person having three royal rolls on one creature? <laughs> three and six triggers. Playing Tron. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is. That's Tron. All right. If we have light balls for that. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. Now we're moving on. Yeah. All right. the, Next card, the um... Iron Crag. Uh, it's a two mana legendary artifact with tap, add colorless. It has flavor text. Okay. Doesn't really have flavor text. It has another ability. It says whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control. You may have the Iron Crag become a legendary equipment artifact named Everflame Hero's Legacy. If you do, it gains equipped three. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and loses all other abilities. Uh, the Iron Crag loses all other all other abilities for context, not the creature. Uh, yeah, this if it card made is highly rated because it's a two mana rock. <laughs> That's all I can say. Honestly, honestly, it, 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 a lot of people might be thinking that's a cheap thing, but we're talking about historic brawl here. And a two mana uh, mana rock alone is pretty good. The only ones we got, I believe, is like arcane signet, a mind stone, and this now. We have signet, cold steel, guardian idol, cold steel, and mind stone. Yeah, th those are like the so four. So we have four. This is going to be the fourth. This is going to be like the fifth one to enter, and is only going to be one of the two. I mean, one of the three that doesn't enter tap. Exactly, and that's why this is so good. Is that for almost every deck that plays two mana rocks this is better than guardian idol and yeah guardian idol sees a lot of play and so this card will also <laughs> honestly with, thank you for bringing up guardian idol because honestly the payoff with this is even better too because with guardian idol you have to pay a mana or two mana to animate it to attack head situation whereas here if you don't need it as a mana rock anymore you you can play a commander, it'll turn into a sword, you equip the sword to your commander, it stabs the person, we all have fun, laugh, except the opponent, they die, and moving on. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's right. something I agree with. It is better than Guardian Idol, because it comes in untapped, and if your commander is a creature, it can become an artifact. That's mostly flavor text, but it can definitely do stuff in some games. Because the sword sure. of your heroes. Yeah. Alright, all moving on is... A card I think a lot of people are excited for, including me, Blossoming Tortoise. For two and double green, it, you get a creature, I mean, you get a good old turtle, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, mill three cards and return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. Activate ability is a land you cause, a control costs one less to activate. And land creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So the idea of Blossoming Turtle, I feel, is to be working with the re I mean, with animation lands or commander's animation abilities. But the real, in my opinion, the real best part about it is that the mill three and return land accelerates you fast, but can also work with things like a demolition field, ghost quarter, all that. So you go, you ghost quarter your opponent, uh, they get a land. You play the turtle, you mill three, you get the land back, and all that. Yeah. Then uh, with Demolition Field and uh, Field of Ruin, you only have to pay one mana to activate it, so it pays for itself. Effectively. Well, it, it'd be paying one mana, basically, because it also has to tap it. One mana, tap it, to blow yeah. up a land, and then you get a land back. So yeah. that pays for itself. Yeah, I, I think this card is just very good in general, because it's, it, it's a creature that, when it enters, will most likely get you a land, and then it needs to be answered immediately, because the value it gets is just insane. If you're playing Azusa, and you play a lot of lands with particular activated abilities, you want this. If you're playing any kind of deck that likes having its graveyard full, this one is great, because it does that every turn, and also gives you lands for doing it. It's just It does so many things, it's very good. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we we agree. It's a great card. So it is let's a very uh, good move card. on to our next card. Yep. Yeah, Where Fox Bodyguard. It is one white white for a two two with flash. When it enters the battlefield, you can exile up to one uh, other target non fox creature until it leaves the battlefield. Uh, I don't think anyone is playing the cycling fox, so we're good on this one. You can pay one and a white to sacrifice it and gain two life. Uh, it's here because it is instant speed brutal clathar. Um, yeah, that's it. it. It's it's three mana, remove a creature at instant speed in white. Great for aggressive decks. It's just, in general, very good. 
Well, in my opinion, it's more than just a brutal Cathar because you can target your own creatures with it too. So let's say your opponent is using Farewell to nuke your entire board, but you want to keep your commander. So what you do is you cast this guy, he enters battlefield, you exile your commander under him, then the board gets wiped and you keep your, your commander re-enters the battlefield, has its own ETB effect that That's... type situation. That is worth noting, uh, because I actually forgot about that line. Uh, in addition, to actually, with that line, is that if you really, really, really need to, you can pay three mana, exile your commander, and then pay two mana to sacrifice the bodyguard and bring it back. If you really need a five mana blink spell, this can also be a well, five the mana thing blink is, spell. The thing is, though, <laughs> the thing is, when it leaves the field, it uh, also can blink, too, yeah. So you could use it with, say, a Traxa, too, for example. You cast that Traxa, you get... You get the weird fox in your hand, you play the fox, exile it, eat the fox, just got an, an attracts of five mana. Ah, uh, actually, that is a line, that, yeah, this might actually see play in Atraxa, funnily enough. Yeah, I can <laughs> see that, because uh, that deck doesn't really play many creatures, so if you can get, even if it's temporary removal, it's removal on a creature that can also get you another attracts of trigger. I can see that. That's, being what, that's why I feel like it was uh, worth keeping it so high on the list. That's fair, it's, yeah. And also, it, it's just it a really good card for aggressive decks. Yeah, I can see that. That's good to know. So, yeah, attracts yeah. players. Keep an eye out on this one. Maybe you want it. <laughs> All right, next. All right, moving on. We're next on our study. last two. La final, yeah, top two. The common. Uh, we have a common in second. Uh, quick study. Three mana, instant speed, draw two cards. That's it. Uh, it's great. Uh, so many blue like control based decks if you're playing blue instant speed three mana draw two at instant speed it's great there's really just nothing else to say <laughs> in my opinion as i don't really play a lot of blue i'm very boring that way but as a whole i i do even think that at three mana it draw two is an insane thing when you look at the previous ways we got card draw for two, draw two cards for three mana being sorcery speeds, and everyone keeps on saying they were unplayable because they were sorcery speed, the fact that we now have one that's at instant speed can prove whether those people were just saying it was unplayable due to sorcery or unplayable because it could be a bad card. <laughs> yeah. In I my know. opinion, I do th I do think that the card draw for three mana is insane. It allows you to use things like Brawl, uh, chief compliance and make it a two mana instant draw two card site. So if your opponent doesn't want to bait into a barrel effect, you can still get a more value out of it than you would uh, say with uh, uh, others types of card draw. Yeah, that, that's the main use is that you can both hold up counter magic and this. Uh, in last tournament in my raw list, I was playing one of the divination variants. I was playing the alchemy one, which lets you draw two, and then you can exile an instant sorcery card to get a different one. Uh, that was mostly just for because that filtered very well. But this one, I think, just in general, in so many blue decks, this will see a lot of play, which is why it's really high up. It's just it's very good. Alchemy. That alchemy card was not well from alchemy, wasn't it? Yeah, alchemist refuge. Uh, so, no, it so was the a, fact that unexpected conversion is the card name. Unexpected yeah. conversion, but it was an alchemy card, right? Yeah, yes, it is. So the fact that this card tops to what some people hate of alchemy cards means you can cut out an alchemy card from your deck. That's Everyone it. wins. Everyone wins. <laughs> Uh, jokes aside, we're moving on to our number one card. Number and one shock, best card in the set. <laughs> and shock, shock! It's Beseech the Mirror. A uh, one black, one and triple black uh, car sorcery with a bargain ability that allows you to search your library for a card, exile it face down, then shuffle. If the spell was bargain, you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. If that spell's mana value is four or less, but exile the card in your hand if it wasn't cast this way. So. This card is literally one of the most broken card, uh, tutors of all time. It's not, and it's not just because it's a. A lot of people will think that the triple black is a bit of a pushback type situation, try to balance it. But honestly, with the way uh, the format is, you could easily cast this on curve turn four, four in a, like a one or two um, black deck. Blue deck. But the real key thing that I think why we put this one on top over other cards on our list is the fact that you get to cast the spell thing. If it was you may play the card without a uh, uh, mana cost, uh, one might argue you could get your land if you wanted. But no, the real thing is you can cast it. That means it triggers things like the one ring. It triggers uh, abilities of just cast general. Uh, when you play a creature that has an ETB effect type situation, it's an if you 
cast this, you get that effect. As a whole, this can protect you with one ring this, and just let you get your card draw started right away. It can get you Bowmaster. It can get you uh, Imrata. It gets me any of my combo pieces that I need. I can get Alter Dementia I, by eating a Nazgul token, get the Nazgul token back, and then get play the uh, Alters, which allows me to just win on the spot. Yeah. Now, uh, Hazard, you want you feel like you need to add anything else? Uh, yeah, I got it's it's just quite insane. There's been memes about it being like beseech the One Ring, basically, uh, yeah. because that's usually what it's gonna be. It's it's four mana tutor the One Ring if you don't want the One Ring. I don't know. You could tutor Shieldred if you need to drain your opponent. Tutor the Languish if you need to clear the board. There's so many good targets in the Invoke format. You can do, it's just do literally anything for four mana as long as you have an artifact on the field. And that is trivial, well, now that we have five two-mana rocks that are non-creatures, in addition to all the creature two-mana rocks, treasure tokens, any tokens in general, which black decks play a lot, it's, yeah, it's insane. <laughs> and I'm just going to remind you, remember, that you can also sacrifice enchantments in that type situation. So if you, you say you don't care about your opponent with the Curse of Silence anymore, you could eat the Curse of Silence to the... Uh, the siege to get your three winning piece right then and there. Good luck casting a commander when you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's just it's so versatile and in my and in our opinion, I guess very. It's it's easier to use than it looks. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a new staple for sure. And then I I think what was it? demonic consultation can see play, and that one has just sacrifices a creature as a search. I'm probably getting the wrong uh, uh, one. I, I don't it, know offhand the one you're talking about. Oh, Brothers I'm War, Diabolic Intent. The, that one. Diabolic Intent. Thank Sorry. you. That one. The fact that that card can see play is uh, in this type of format really shows how e easily it is for a tutor with a downside to be valued. And yeah. even if even if you don't think of it as, what if I don't have anything to sacrifice? Well, you can cast it. Yeah. It has no reason. It doesn't have additional cost. The additional cost is if you want to cast the card you search. For free. So you essentially pay four mana and eating something to cast uh, up to eight mana of value. Yeah. The, the, yeah. D Diabolic Intent, it's two mana sacrifice a creature to search the card. This can be four mana, sack a token, and then immediately get your four mana back with any card from your deck. It's, yeah. It, it, it does so much for its for how it is like for its cost it's yeah it, it's it will see a lot of play in a lot of formats in my opinion not just this one so yeah that has been the uh top 12 for wild developed trains uh cards for historic brawl having uh tune in next time and we'll tell you about the enchantments uh, i am grinside and i'm hazard We'll, we'll see you in it soon. Peace. Yeah.